Antibiotics first became available as medical therapy in the 1930s, with the sulfur drugs being the first to market, followed by penicillin in 1945. Luckily for fans of James Herriot, this coincided with his years as a mixed practice vet in Yorkshire, England, a time immortalised in his writing. I want to share with you an excerpt from Herriot's book, All Things Bright and Beautiful, which describes his first ever experience with an antibiotic. Harriet has used sulfapyridine, one of the earliest sulfonamide antibiotics, in a last-ditch effort to save the lives of five seriously ill calves. After several doses over a 24-hour period, all five calves are showing signs of recovery. The farmer and Harriet are astounded at the miraculous turnaround. They've never seen anything like this before. I didn't know it at the time, but I had witnessed the beginning of a revolution. It was my first glimpse of the tremendous therapeutic breakthrough, which was about to sweep the old remedies into oblivion. The long rows of ornate glass bottles with their carved stoppers and Latin inscriptions would not stand on the dispensary shelves much longer. And their names, dearly familiar for many generations, sweet spirits of nitre, salamonia, tincture of camphor, would be lost and vanish forever. This was the beginning, and just around the corner, a new wonder was waiting. Penicillin and the other antibiotics. At last we had something to work with. At last we could use drugs which we knew were going to do something. All over the country, probably all over the world at that time, vets were having these first spectacular results, going through the same experience as myself. Some with cows, some with dogs and cats, others with valuable racehorses, sheep, pigs, in all kinds of environments. Of course, it didn't last. Not the miraculous part of it, anyway. What I had seen was the impact of something new on an entirely unsophisticated bacterial population. But it didn't go on like that. In time, the organisms developed a certain amount of resistance, and new and stronger sulfonamides and antibiotics had to be produced. We have good results now, but no miracles. And I feel I was lucky to be one of the generation which was in at the beginning when the wonderful things did happen. Those five calves never looked behind them, and the memory of them gives me a warm glow even now. With results like this from their initial use, it's easy to understand how antibiotics were considered to be wonder drugs. Early sulfonamides saved the lives both of a Royal Circus Lion and Winston Churchill, and penicillin has been credited with impacting the outcome of the Second World War. A golden age of antibiotic discoveries from the 1940s through the 1980s led to the discovery of all of the major classes that we use today. An effective pool of antibiotics enabled advances in healthcare such as hip replacement surgery and cancer chemotherapy, both commonly performed in veterinary practice today. Harriet's reflections, written in 1973, remain generally accurate today. In most cases, we do continue to get good results with antibiotics. But the prevalence of resistant bacteria is growing, and with it, the number of treatment failures. Certain resistant pathogens now warrant ongoing surveillance and frequent review of treatment protocols. We can all do our bit by staying up to date with best practice in the diagnosis and management of bacterial diseases in the species that we treat, and by only using antibiotics when we are confident of non-self-limiting bacterial disease. Antibiotics are not a cure-all, not a trade-off for poor hygiene or biosecurity, and not a concession to satisfy difficult clients. As Harriet predicted, Antibiotics have revolutionised veterinary practice. They are wonder drugs, and we're lucky to have them in our arsenal. Only by recognising their value and treating them accordingly can we preserve them for our patients and our families. <laughs>